Welcome back to the attic. Today, I'm going to do an art trade. Trading some of my art for a pen. Use a pen, make art, trade the art to get other pens. That seems like a pretty good cycle, right? So I'm going to trade this piece right here, which I made a long time, not a long time ago. I made this frame here in a 3D modeling program printed it out and painted it too. So the frame is a bit of art as well. So framed drawing. And then that's actually all the person asked for, but also I'm going to throw in these two pieces as well. It fits in there perfectly. I'm going to put like some paper and bubble wrap around it. And then see these two pieces can perfectly encapsulate it. And then I'll wrap, I'll wrap this up some more as well. So it's like art within art. So I'm doing this trade with someone named, someone named Keenan, who has bought some of my art in the past. Thank you. And this is the pen he's sending right here. It's a very nice pen. You know, it's nice if it comes in this nice wooden box. Also, you know, it's nice if you recognize this name and logo right here, Namiki. Uh-huh. A little note from Keenan, which was very nice. Thank you. I read it already. And then even the little user guide that comes with the pen is on like very nice paper. Uh, a, a pen sleeve. I don't know if this came with it originally or if that's from Keenan. Foam, squishy, squishy. And then normally these things aren't in plastic bags. I'm assuming uh, he put them, especially like this ink bottle for, for shipping purposes. This is blue ink. I don't know if I'll use that, but here it's the important part. Now I've tried an Amiki before, but it, I borrowed it. Um, now this one is going to be mine, and also the one I tried before was much. It was a it was a Namiki Emperor, and it was much bigger. It was like an oversized pen, if you know about the Namiki Emperor or remember that video. But this one is more of a pen-sized pen, and it has this beautiful pine needle effect on there, and this sparkly effect too. Here's the signature. That's pretty cool. A pen with a signature on it. That's kind of meta. I wonder what pen they used to make the signature. It, it couldn't have written on itself. It says Namiki right there. Cool patterns, sparkles. I think he said the sparkle technique was called Raiden. Uh, it's like abalone shells. Here's the nib, Mount Fuji on the nib there. On this side, there's a, some little symbols. And on this side, it has a little number. I think it says 317. Anyways, this has a very nice converter, piston converter in it, one of the ones that you push, and then it will suck the ink up into it as you push it down. So the other Namiki I tried was, uh, like I said, very big, oversized. Uh, this one, I don't think I'll be... Actually, it, it caps wonderfully. The other one, this one, it's almost like the inside of the cap is made of velvet or something. The way it slides right on there doesn't feel like it's biting or chafing or chomping. I mean, it's my pen now. I can do what I want with it. And if I want to ruin it by capping, like some people suggest it might, because it has the, I don't know, is this the Arushi lacquer? I think this is like a $1,400 pen is what I'm saying, which is why I'm excited. This might be one of my most expensive pens now. I'm, it's not going to be like those people who buy designer cars and don't don't drive them out of the driveway, okay? I'm not going to stress out about capping it or using it. We're going to go draw with it right now. Now, looking into the process of making this pen, just even peeling back the very top layer, I can see it is a very intricate and elaborate process which I am sure I cannot explain or begin to understand. 
I will say the artisan credited on the website is Kokokai. And I think this is actually a group of artisans. I don't know if this is actually a Rushi lacquer. The, the technique is called Togadashi Hira Maki'i. And Maki'i on Wikipedia is set, it is another type of lacquer, but this is actually referring to the, the way in which these patterns and pictures are drawn with lacquer on the surface of other lacquerware. Uh, so I think that's what the, that's referring to the pine needles. I think what they do is they, they make the initial lacquer and then they draw with lacquer again. So they draw the surf, the, the pine needle shapes, and then they would sprinkle on gold dust, which would stick to the wet lacquer. So, uh, there's some specific other type of maki e. There's like different types. And this one is Togadashi Hira. Oh, just Google it. Okay, I'm not going to read the Wikipedia article out to you because, I mean, just read it for yourself if you care. You should care. It's very interesting. And apparently, you know, this is one of those things where people are apprentices for years and then they slowly get better and they become masters. And this has been happening for for centuries, right, in Japan. And so they, uh, it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. So I think I will... Probably try not to post the cap of the pen on the back of the pen just because even though it is probably pretty resilient, I don't want to rub off the pine needles. I've always liked pine needles in real life, though. It's like nature's version of hatching and cross hatching. Even when they're on trees, it's like a little more organized. And then when they fall on the ground, it's a little more random but it still looks good. There are lines with sharp tips that smell good and burn fast. In other news, I just finished all my classes for the spring semester at school and I got straight A's, good. I'm proud of myself. I have, I'm not taking any summer classes, but I've already enrolled for the fall semester. I'm gonna take another art history class a ceramics class. I'm not really sure what that will be like. Something with clay, I guess. I think it's like an introductory one. And then also a metal foundry class, which is just going to be more like like casting things with molten metal, I think. So I'm looking forward to both of those. I'm mostly excited about these because uh, it's like an opportunity to work with materials and with like uh, tools and like supplies, like especially like the metal foundry one. I feel like I, th this is like a chance to do things that I normally wouldn't be able to do here at home, right? It's hard to set up a furnace and, and melt down ingots of iron. E even if I had a big backyard, that takes some amount of expertise, so... I mean, eventually, after a certain number of YouTube videos, I maybe could figure out how to do it on my own, but I would, there's probably a, maybe at least a, a big chunk of a chance that I could hurt myself pretty seriously. And it's good. I don't know. I like being around other people, other artists and stuff who uh, like making things. Uh, there still is this kind of inherent problem with... Uh, it's It's not as bad, okay? When I wasn't... I'm in the art program now. I switched from the interior architecture program. It's not as bad. There used to be this pro problem where people were just kind of going through the motions, right? I admit, I'm, I think I'm 31 now. So I, I admit I'm in a different stage of my life than a lot of students who are just like 18, 19, 20 years old, just kind of going to college because that's what you're supposed to do after high school, right? I've been there. I've done that. I dropped out. And I feel like some, especially in the terror architecture program, some of them I could tell were there. They were just like, I'm here. I'm in class. What more do you want from me? Right? And it's frustrating to be around those type of people, uh, especially when you're forced to work with them in groups or something. When you're excited to be there and you want to do cool things and you want to get stuff done, it's not quite as bad with uh, an art program, I think. Okay? Just because... I feel like you don't you don't typically 
enroll in the art program unless you at least like art a little bit. So that's like a good prerequisite. But even still, there is still sometimes an issue of people ending up in classes just to get a certain like credit out of the way or they're like, this isn't going to be my concentration. Or when there's presentations, uh, everyone sits <laughs> like in the back of the classroom or as far away as possible. Um, I don't know. It's fine. It's going to be okay. And I used to think the interior architecture professors were chill just because they like to be called by their first name. But the art, the professors in the art program, they're on another level of chill, of course. I mean, that's probably to be expected. Um, except for, I mean, also it's also to be expected some of them that are like the art history professors, some of them that are like doctors and stuff they like to be called doctor that's a, I understand that but some of the other ones like a uh, foundry professor you know it's just like I think he gets a little uncomfortable if you call him professor or even mister so it's just very I don't know I feel like I can get along with everyone and no one's talking down to you or preaching to you it's just like hey this is how you can do stuff here's some ideas here's your assignments and you know what do you need like here here's your stuff Let's do some cool things. And so I like those. I like it's a good atmosphere for making things and thinking of cool new things to do. So I like that. <laughs>